White people are scared to death right now, particularly white males. They're scared to death that they are going to lose their power in the future. And they are. But if you want to get ready for the future, if you want to be treated well in the future, treat others well in the present. Call me Louis. This is my spot. Louis Pets. Victor Hugo said, no force on earth can stop an idea whose time has come. The idea of one race, the human race, is an idea whose time has come. We are not going to be able to stop it no matter what they do. They can elect Trump after Trump after Trump and that will not stop the idea that there's only one race on the face of the earth, it's the human race and we are all members of it. You and I are cousins. Now if you don't like being my cousin, that's too bad for you. But we are all in the same family. We are members of the family of man. You say that all whites are racist. Can you ex expound on that, please? Any, any white person who was born, raised, and schooled in the United States of America, if you aren't a racist, you're a miracle. Either that or you decided to educate yourself. Because education in this country is about white is right, brown's all right, black's got to stand back. Yellow's mellow, but whites, we, we educate in a way that says that white males have done all the adventures, have made all the adventures, have done all the discovering, have made all, and everything that is good and has been accomplished has been accomplished according to social studies, which is actually anti-social studies, by white males. It's a lie. But we do that in order to maintain the myth of white superiority. The myth of race has to be maintained at all costs in this country. Because if white people have to give up the color of their skin as being something that makes them perfect, what do they have left? If we start teaching the truth about history, if we start teaching about Nile Valley contributions to civilization, it will totally change the way we conduct ourselves in the classroom. It will have to. Columbus didn't discover America. You can't discover a place where people are already living. But we celebrate that every October. It's a lie. We need to get over, we, all, we need to stop telling the myths and start telling the truth. Most people will say, I'm not racist. I'm not a racist. Why, some of my best friends are black. Right. Yeah, and then you say, name one. <laughs> or this one, I don't see color. And when some woman says to me, I don't see color, I say, I knew that if you saw color, you wouldn't dye your hair that way. Or I say, if you, didn't, if you saw color, you wouldn't wear that shirt with those pants. I believe that you don't see color. It's an attempt to deny skin color. And it's an attempt, an attempt to deny What's wrong with seeing the color of my skin? Is it all right for you to see me kind of pink? That's okay for me, I don't mind. I, and I suspect that you don't mind being seen the color you are. You have a right to be what you are. And until people in this country and people in this world get it into their heads that the first modern human beings that evolved on this earth were black women. They evolved in sub-Saharan Africa about 280,000 years ago. And every human being on the face of the earth today runs the me has the memory of those black women's genetic structure in their genes. Now, we don't want to admit that, but that's the way it is. And people, as people moved farther and farther from the equator, their bodies produced less and less melanin, so their hair, their skin, and their eyes got lighter. As they moved into the east, they ate a lot of fish and a lot of vegetables, so their skin took on a different tone. I found, I found that out when I was raising little kids. My husband worked in a supermarket. He, had, he was the head of the produce department. And they had lots of oranges that they couldn't sell, so he'd bring them home. And I was feeding my kids orange juice like you never saw in your life. They began to have an orange cast to their skin. I thought they had something, a liver problem. So I took him to the doctor, and she said, what are you feeding these kids? I said, well, lots of orange juice. She said, stop it if you want them to stop being orange. Now, if you think that skin color isn't anything other than the body's natural reaction to the natural environment, get over it. If all white people are racist, according to you, can they be reprogrammed? Of course they can. Of course they can. Of How? course they can be. You, it's called education. I'm an educator. The word educator comes from the root duck deuce, which means lead, the prefix e, which means out, the suffix ate, which means the act of, and the suffix or, which means one who does. An educator is one who is engaged in the act of leading people out of ignorance. Now, I know you can change them. My, the second the second year I did the blue-eyed, brown-eyed exercise in my classroom, it was filmed by the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. They gave me a copy of that film. I showed it to my father. My father was about 59 years old at the time. He's been a farmer all his life. He raised six, he raised six, seven, six kids, lost one, raised, seven, raised six. Watch that film as a 59-year-old man. When it was over, he stood up. 
and with tears in his eyes, he took his red handkerchief out of the back pocket of his overalls, his bib overalls, and said, I wish somebody had taught me that when I was nine years old. Nobody had dare say to me, this doesn't work, this is too harsh, this isn't necessary, you can't teach an old dog new tricks because they're wrong. You can teach an old dog new tricks. You can teach people to give up the myth of racism. Somebody taught the Greeks to give up the myth that the sun was a god in a golden chariot that went across the sky every morning. They believed that for hundreds of years. We have believed the myth of three or four races, different races in this country, for long enough. There's no such thing as reverse racism. You can only be a racist if you have the power to institutionalize what you're doing to people who are different from you. What, you're call what we're calling reverse racism is natural reaction to being treated unfairly on the basis of somebody else's ignorance. Now, don't ever let anybody say to you or about anyone around you that people don't like that person because of the color of their skin. That isn't the reason pe white people don't like people of color. They don't like people of color because they don't understand about skin color. And they don't understand that we all are descendants of somebody who looked like your mother. You, want, you don't really want to get me started on this. because I, I do want to get you started. I'm really angry about what, how we are miseducating the American mind. And, and, and your exercises in order for them to see the light? Or is there another way it's to... Necess it's necessary to do what we do in offices and in the military and in schools and colleges and in hospitals and in community groups all the time. What we do is we become our parent ego. We go into our parent ego state and that forces all those we're working with into their child ego state. And if you watch our present so-called president, he spends most of his time either in his child or his parent ego state. He never gets into his adult ego state unless he's reading off the teleprompter. And he is such a poor reader that oftentimes he makes mistakes and then he is instantly in his child ego state right in front of your very eyes. It's absolutely fascinating to watch it happen. God created human beings, the human race, and they started out black women. White people created racism. Human beings created racism. It's time to get over it. A lot of people have criticized President, former President Obama on was not speaking out on race enough. Do you think he failed in that? What if he had spoken out enough on race? Imagine what would have happened to him. The man is still alive. Do you remember Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.? Do you remember Malcolm X? Do you remember all those people have been killed not because of the color of their skin, but because of the fear of white people that someone who isn't white is going to look better, sound better, act better, do better than they do? Mr. Obama was the president of all of us. He wasn't just the president of black people. He was the president of all of us. The man who's there now is and claims to be the president of the people who look like him. When he says, make America great again, what he's really saying is, make America hate again. You need to realize that it is not the intent of white people to let this situation change in favor of anyone but themselves. And right now, white people are really frightened. If you don't understand the destruction of Planned Parenthood uh, offices, and you don't understand the wall that we're going to build on the southern border of the United States, you haven't read the book, The Birth Dearth by Ben Wattenberg. Ben Wattenberg was a brilliant Jewish man who was a member of the American Enterprise Institute. And he wrote a book, the first paragraph of which says, the main problem confronting the United States today is there aren't enough white babies being born in this country. He was an advisor to presidents of the United States. He wrote the book in 1987. He says, there are, if we don't change this and change it rapidly, White people will lose their numerical majority in this country and this will no longer be a white man's land. Now, I'm not misrepresenting, misrepresenting this. I'm telling you exactly, almost exactly what he says. He says there are three things we can do to solve this. Number one, we could pay women to have babies as they have been doing in Western European nations for years. Then he says, and these are his words, not mine. Unfortunately, we would have to pay women of all colors to have babies, so we don't want to do that. He says the second thing we could do is increase the number of legal immigrants that are allowed into this country every year. Then once again, he says, unfortunately, the vast majority of those wanting to come to this country today are people of color, so we don't want to do that. The third thing he says, and white men, women had better pay attention to this, 
60% of the fetuses that are aborted every year are white. If we could keep that 60% alive, that would solve our birth dearth. Does that sound like racism to you? And if it doesn't, I want to know why it doesn't. If it doesn't, you don't understand what racism is. And I think it does. When we close Planned Parenthood clinics, because we think they're there only for abortion, we need to take another look. They are used for many, many, many things, and many women need the things that they can get from Planned Parenthood clinics. But we are willing to do away with all that good to avoid allowing white women to have control of their own bodies. White people are scared to death right now, particularly white males. They're scared to death that they are going to lose their power in the future, and they are. But if you want to get ready for the future, if you want to be treated well in the future, treat others well in the present. What we do in the present constructs the future. What we have done in the past, we can learn from that. And we'd better learn from that. Those who forget the mistakes of the past are doomed to repeat them. And when you read this book, you'll realize that that's exactly what we're doing. We're repeating the mistakes that we have made in the past because we aren't teaching about these mistakes in the present. We are not teaching history that is true. We aren't teaching social studies that is true. We aren't even teaching true geography, for God's sake. You want to talk about forgiveness? You want to talk about changing this thing? I cannot understand how Japanese people can stand the sight of any of us, and yet they do. I cannot understand why black people who have been subjected to the ugliness that they've been subjected to in this country can get up every morning and go to work among us and not be absolutely furious. And I don't understand why we allow white people to behave the way they do. We have got to stop tolerating the intolerable. If it's intolerable for my black cousins, and every black person on this earth is one of my cousins, if it's intolerable for them, it's intolerable for me. I will not tolerate it. I will not tolerate it. That is not that. I am required not to tolerate that kind of treatment for the people who are related to me. And that's every person on the face of the earth. If your ignorance is such that you will mistreat somebody because of your ignorance about the color of their skin, don't do it around me. Number one. I've been threatened with death lots of times. Now I say, go for it, fool. My husband died four years ago. Being with him would not be a bad thing for me. Death is not the worst thing that can happen to you. Living a worthless, useless life is much worse than dying.